Good evening. At this time, I'd like to call the City of Twinsburg Caucus meeting for July 11th, 2023 to order. The time is 7 p.m. Shannon, please call the roll. Mr. Barr? Here. Mrs. Walker? Present. Mr. Post? Here. Mrs. Levy? Here. Mr. Fury? Here. Mr. Deeds? Here. Mr. Bellin? All right. Thank you, Shannon. Uh, do we have any presentations this evening? We do not. And moving along, uh, items for discussion. Does Council have anything they'd like to discuss at this time? No. Thank Mayor, you. Mayor, anything you good? No, I wanted to thank. I wanted to thank Ski for uh, putting those signs up for me. I <clears throat> unfortunately I had to text him on a Sunday, but he responded right away. I mean, like right away, and then they got the signs up um, informing people of the um, water mains still being uh, an, an issue down at the bottom of Cannon. So I do appreciate it, Ski. Wonderful. Thank you. I have, I have something to say to Ski, I'm going to say this. <laughs> uh, there was um, an incident on Sharon Brook, and uh, Ski called me up and said that, you know, he would handle it. And what I did, I got in my car and I drove down to see what was going on. And uh, he, if he directed traffic, he did a great job. He talked to the uh, residents there regarding this incident. And I just want to thank you for being so prompt when there was an emergency with this resident in my ward. So I appreciate your good work. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Walker. Any other items for discussion? Go around one at a time talking about them. <laughs> <laughs> nice job every day. Nice job. I mean, you do great. Great work. All right. I think he's pretty good. I like Amy. <laughs> Amy's pretty good too. Uh, uh, we're, we're very fortunate to have the best of the best in your city. All right, uh, that moves us on to audience participation. Shannon, do we have any audience participation? We do. First, we have Lynn Clark. All right. Good evening. I wanted to touch base on a couple of things that you're going to be voting on either tonight or soon. Uh, the first one is regarding the food trucks. And as I understood the proposed legislation, it limited the number of times a truck could go to different places. Having worked in a lot of plants, those workers many times depend on the food truck for their lunch or their dinner or their breakfast or all three. So please think about those workers that are in that situation. Uh, number two, on the ordinance number 77, I suggest it get broken into several different pieces. One, so the citizens can vote on each one of those issues. Because some people may say, I like number one, but not number two. And you, you may lose some votes, may not get a true understanding of what's the temper of the citizens. Uh, Number four, or excuse me, ordinance number 84 and 85, just a simple question on were those competitive bids and not just a, can we go ahead and have the mayor enter a, a contract? And then, uh, you know, once again on number 86, have we come up with a definition of what's an emergency yet? That's it for tonight. I'm anticipating there's no response to those things. Next, we have Emmett Gould. Good evening, sir. You just state your name and address. Right. Good evening. My name's Emmett Gould. I live at 3600 Cannon Road. Thank you. Um, so tonight I am addressing City Council because I'd like to request your consideration on an important matter. Um, that'd be the allocation of funds for the construction of sidewalks on Liberty Road. Um, the proposed sidewalk project would bring immense benefits to the thousands of residents inhabiting neighborhoods such as the Highlands, the reserve at Kensington, Abraham's Farm, Blue Jay Farm, Ethan's Green, and many others. Um, it is vital to highlight that this endeavor goes beyond mere infrastructure. It, reverse, it represents an opportunity to enhance accessibility for all those who call Tonsburg home, as well as people who live, work, or play here. Um, by extending the sidewalks from the corner of Cannon and Liberty until they intersect with the Reminderville sidewalk off of Post Road, specifically at the entrance of Liberty Park Ledges slash Nature Center, we can establish crucial connections. Um, the significance of sidewalks along Liberty Road extends far beyond convenience. Not only would it grant easier access to Liberty Park, but it will also provide safe pedestrian pathways to various Twinsburg 
and Reminderville establishments, neighborhoods, walkways, and restaurants. This endeavor holds the potential to transform Twinsburg into a pedestrian-friendly community, reducing our reliance on vehicles and fostering an environment conductive to outdoors activities for both children and adults. We aspire to create an ideal space where residents and visitors can traverse our beautiful city without the need for a car. My and my conversations with numerous residents who reside along Liberty Road and frequent Liberty Park, I encounter nothing but support for this initiative. The demand for sidewalks has been a long-standing desire of a community, and it is my sincerest hope that the City Council will listen to the voices of the citizens. This project enjoys widespread support, and thus far, I've not come across many objections. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much, you. sir. Excuse me, Mr. Yes, Mr. Is it Mr. Gold. Mr. Gould. How do you spell your last name? Uh, G E U L. Yeah. Okay, and, and what was your address again? Uh, three six zero zero Cannon Road. Yeah. Thank you. Thank nice you. Nice presentation. Mr. Gold, I believe Mr. Post wanted to respond. All right. Thank you for uh, coming up here. I, I, I um, just want to let you know that uh, Amy Moore, who is sitting right next to you, uh, who is our city engineer, uh, she and I walked from Liberty Park all the way down to Post Road just two weeks ago, spent an hour walking through what it will take to build a sidewalk there. So uh, I've talked to Ms. Moore for probably six months, I brought it up here one time that I agree with you wholeheartedly that there should be a sidewalk down Liberty Road to give everyone access to um, to that to that park. Um, but it, we're in the preliminary stages, but I want to let you know that I agree with you wholeheartedly it should be there. Um, right now, Ms. Moore's taking the time to figure out what it will take, what it will cost, and then once we go from there, we will have to figure out budgets and the like. So it is something that is a work in progress. I just hope you can understand that things like this take time, but we are working to make that happen. Well, I am on your side working to make that happen. I'll speak for myself. Um, and hopefully we will have a sidewalk in the near future. So thank you for coming out. Appreciate you. Anyone else have comments for Mr. Gould? Thank you again for your time this evening. Uh, anyone else, Jane? We do. Karen Clinton. Good evening, everyone. Um, Karen Clinton, Glenwood Drive. Um, Mr. President Barr, I'm going to ask you for a little latitude here tonight. Um, a little over 15 years ago, I stood at this very same podium, and I requested from Council that they consider hiring more police officers. I have a history with this community that goes back 40 some odd years. I was a police dispatcher back in the 80s. <sighs> we had a wonderful crew. We had awesome men, Vietnam vets. I mean, <sighs> the names that ring in my head, you know, I could go on and on and on. You know, Papish and <sighs> Kachera and Munn. To name a few. Um, Deal, who, Sergeant Deal, who ultimately became our um, chief, who uh, they said on a good day would put his own mother in jail. <laughs> I remember him bringing my son and uh, his skateboard home, the very same son that ran for mayor. Um, so here we are. <sighs> Fifteen years later. We have the same amount of patrolmen on the streets that we had when we had eight or 9,000 residents, very few business. We have quadrupled that. We have become a lawless community, and I have come here year after year after year and begged for more police and fire. You guys came up with this issue 24 during the Yates administration. 
that crashed and burned, and rightfully so. He said, well, we need money to share up the police and fire pensions. And we said, okay, fine, we're going to give it to you. Now you get plenty of money for police and fire and service. We still don't have them. This is a lawless community. They sail up and down my street on Glenwood on a regular. I called, they said, call the police. My councilman, call the police. You call the police and you get... Is this an emergency? And of course, I was calling non emergency number. Is this an emergency? No. And you get that, and you know that they're busy, and I'm like, hey, I'll call back. <laughs> no worries, this is chronic. I'll call back. I have to ask for an officer for some visibility to slow these people down. Daily. Daily. We had an officer that made the ultimate sacrifice. He gave his life, and he gave it in such a horrific way that it is so difficult for me to stand here and talk about it. And you know what I see when I look at all of you? I see a little peanut and, and Dan Durham, and when he makes that, that comical thing where people talk and they, they're pleading, and he goes, Meow, because the truth is you don't hear us. Morgan. Our, our, our police chief, our fire chief, they come and they tell you what the numbers are on a regular. These horrific numbers of crimes, drugs, squad runs, everything but pleading for some help. And all I hear from this community is, well, we went on this outing and we went on that outing and we cut a ribbon and blah, 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 and, and it was, it was attended by all and it was wonderful and everything's great. It's not great. Why don't you see this? You hear the numbers. You have the money. I stand before you telling you that an officer gave his life and how hard everybody worked. Morgan, God love him. He was on the first fire call with me. We were on this, this old vehicle. I laugh about it to this day. It looked like a gigantic milk truck. It was a utility vehicle. It used to carry our scot packs. Do you remember that, Tim? Our first run together. We worked hard. We built this community. I got up at 3 in the morning, raced in my car to this station to, to sit on the highway in a rolled-over vehicle with gasoline running in my eyes to help people. And now, you see this? And the watch. Fifteen years. He sacrificed, and you know what he sacrificed. Don't make me go there, because you know what he sacrificed. I don't even know. Did this city, time. Sam? Do we do anything for him? Have you so have you done time. anything? That's your time. Why don't you wrap it up there for me? I didn't ask your opinion. We we have a patrolmen that don't even have a contract. We have patrolmen. They're getting paid substandard wages and patrol women. This has got to stop. You have got to give them a decent contract, you have got to pay them what they're worth, and you have got to beat up the, the patrol and the police and fire in this community because we are a lawless community. You want it to be great, we're not great. We are gonna crash and burn like Cleveland. Thank you for your time this evening. The first time I've heard our community referred to as lawless. It I is, and you know the, it, I, This isn't a back and forth. I resent the implication. Why, well, I, I really, then you are blind. Open your eyes. 15 years of my life as a sworn police officer in the state of Ohio, Ms. Clinton, I don't need to be sat here and lectured by you about public safety. Anything the police and the fire department ask for, this current administration and this council has bent over backwards to try and get them. Including a contract? Mr. Turrell, I'm only going to ask you one more time. Nobody asked for your opinion right now. You had the opportunity to sign up to speak. You elected not to. I'll be in for the regular council meeting. I can't wait. Second of all, there's a collective bargaining and binding arbitration in the state of Ohio that is uh, that process is specifically outlined by the State Employee Relations Board. The city of Twinsburg, as are as our police unions, are following that to the letter. If you have an issue, perhaps you should get some information from the Patrolman's Union about that or speak to the law director or the mayor directly, not in a public forum like this. Shannon, do we have any other participation this evening? There is none. Does anybody have any comments they'd like to add at this time? 
Okay, that moves us on to pending legislation. We're going to start this evening with Ordinance 68 2023. This ordinance is the annual tax budget for 2024. This will be on its final reading tonight. It is on an emergency to get this to the county by the July 20th deadline. Is there any questions or comments on 68 2023? Uh, hearing none, Ordinance 73-2023 is an ordinance to amend Section 743.015 regarding mobile, mobile food vehicle uh, regulations. Uh, Mr. Deeds had some suggestions that he has shared with the law director. Uh, Mr. Bazana, could you review or just give us a, a primer on the changes to the... Uh, Happily. To Thank you, sir. So, uh, first I want to orient Council to uh, how the revisions are noted here. So the. The uh, revisions uh, that were recommended by Mr. Deeds are uh, shown in underline and italics. So if you go to page two, you'll see B3 is struck out in its entirety. That relates to uh, trash and litter from the operation. Uh, also on page two, under C, you'll see the phrase not permitted to is struck. Uh, that's uh, C is actually a pretty simple revision that's designed to just make that list read a little bit clearer. So currently it shall not be permitted to, and then it's X may not do so, and so X may not do it so, and so. Mr. Deeds pointed out that it would just be clear to say, shall operate in the following manner. These items shall not, shall not, shall not. So I, I, I embrace that revision. I think that makes it clear. Uh, going back, so like I said, we have B3 about trash, and then on page uh, three of the, of the legislation you have Section I that talks about outside sound amplifying equipment, balloons, streamers, and flags. That's struck, that first line there. Uh, those two sections that were struck are actually redundant. So they're outlined in other areas of the, the uh, mobile food vehicle. So thank you to Mr. Dietz for pointing that out. Uh, uh, it's going to remove some extraneous language that we don't need in there uh, that was already addressed. Wonderful. Thank you, Mr. D, Mr. Bazana, for your work on that. Uh, Can I mention one other thing? I'm, absolutely. Yeah, I please. just wanted to uh, thank Mr. Bazana for cleaning that up. And uh, Mr. Clark, just so you know, I, I saw the thing, too, about moving from the different areas. You know, um, I had a couple other changes that I tried to get in there. Um, I was not successful um, in doing that, but I think the number of changes that were placed in there made this a, a better article. So we, we did see what you're talking about there, yeah. just so you know. Um, but we don't always get what we want all the time, including the people that set up here. So, but thank you for your comment on that. And thanks, Mr. Bajana, for cleaning that up. Mr. Deeds, thank you. Uh, any other comments on 73? All right, hearing none, that moves us along to Ordinance 77, 2023. Uh, this ordinance uh, is the changes that came out of our recent Charter Review Commission. Uh, this will be on its third reading tonight with an emergency clause. Uh, reason for the emergency is to get this to the Board of Elections for placement on the November 2023 general election ballot. Mr. Bazan, is there anything you'd like to add this evening? Uh, yes. So Mr. Post pointed out at the last meeting that there was a transcription error here in the uh, Section 404, so we've updated that. And the, the transcription was that the, during the, uh, if you look at page three here of the legislation uh, there's three blocks of text in there that are underlined uh, the first line in each of them and those all read the same so we'll just kind of talk about section b here it says if the unexpired term is less than 12 months comma that had read six months the charter review commission the 2023 charter review commission at the last meeting uh, change that from six to 12 months and that didn't make it through. So what I've done here is uh, I've corrected that transcription error and then on page one of the ordinance, uh, we originally had one italicized note under section one. I added a second italicized note that points out uh, that due to the identification of the clerical error in the transcription, the change that I just identified was made to this draft. So it's uh, it's abundantly clear that the uh, seven seven issues, as they are divided up here in this ordinance, to be sent to the Board of Elections, will totally be considered by the uh, Twinsburg electorate, uh, and what they are here. Sorry. So, if you have any questions about that, again, it was just a change from six to twelve, to be consistent with what the final vote of the Charter Review Commission was on that item. Thank you, Mr. Deeds. Thank you. Mr. Bazana, 
And I want to thank uh, Mr. Post for pointing that out to us last week. And, and again, the reason for the 12 months is now that there is a primary in March, if someone was moved to become mayor with only six months, it wouldn't have given them time to run for a primary when they would automatically not be eligible to run for mayor in November. So it made no sense that six month mark, you take over as mayor, but now you have to leave in November because you missed the primary. So that's why we came up with 12 month mark. So you have time to think, choose to run the primary and have a little more opportunity. Okay, that's it. Thank, Thank you, Mr. President. And then just for clarification on this, <clears throat> there will be seven separate ballot issues on the ballot for the November election provided this passes this evening. Uh, so each of these items that the Charter Review Committee uh, worked through, each of these changes is essentially going to be voted on separately. So although the legislation is to approve them as a whole to go on the ballot, they are going to be voted on individually and based on their own merits. Is that Correct, Mr. Rosano? Yeah, that, that, yeah, that's correct. So uh, just to put a finer point on that, so the, the ballot, so the, the recommended changes have been divided up into seven separate issues. The seventh issue, I, I will note, uh, is a, a catch-all to a certain extent that lists uh, six different sections in uh, Chapter 7, and those are more of a, a clerical type uh, revisions that are being pr proposed. The six issues, ballot issue one through six, those are uh, divided up into the uh, subject matter. So for example, uh, I, and, you know, I hate to belabor this, but I think it is a very important point that you're bringing up. Ballot issue one uh, asks the electorate uh, if uh, the revisions related to section 302 regarding how the council ward, bound, ward boundaries excuse me, are drawn uh, should be adopted. Uh, there obviously are a couple changes within that that constitute the ward boundaries section, but they are divided up by topic, so it's clear for the electorate. Similarly, ballot issue two, what we just talked about with the 12 months and the 24 months, uh, that says, shall the proposed revisions to Article 4 of the Charter related to the manner in which midterm vacancies in the office of mayor is filled be adopted? So anytime you're uh, reviewing uh, ballot issues, you can't actually, uh, or it's not prudent, I should say, to uh, have 40, 50, 60 ballot issues that relate to every single independent change within your charter. So what we do is we advise a, a division of them in a way that makes it most clear for the electorate as they go into the voting booth that they know what they're voting on. And obviously these will be published uh, in advance. Uh, our intention at this point uh, myself and Ms. Collins is to utilize uh, uh, the city's uh, website as an initial place to get those out there, all these changes, along with the full text. So you have these different issues, and below it we'll have the full text of the changes. So there's ample time for our residents here to review them and then ask any questions of all of us on, on uh, how, uh, what, what, what this means, should they choose to adopt it or to uh, defeat it at the ballot. Appreciate that. Anyone else, Mr. Fury, you have an issue? Mr. Vanzana, once the language is, is submitted to the Board of Elections and they say it's okay, does this come back to us in the form of resolutions? We've done that in the past. Uh, not, not if there's no changes. Okay. I mean, this, uh, this ordinance here submits uh, to the electors all the different ballot questions. Thank you very much. Uh, any additional discussion on 7723? Walk. I have something. I don't see uh, should the Jedi. It, is that a commission board? That's, that's not charter. Oh, it's not charter. No, it's no. Council. that would be okay. amended if we were making any changes. It's done by ordinance. Okay, yeah. that's correct. Yeah, that Jedi was created by ordinance and therefore so it could be, be repealed, by modified, amended by ordinance. As well, okay. that's not a charter identified board. Okay. Just checking. Thank okay. you. Good question. Good question. All right. Um, Hearing nothing else on 77, that would move us on to Ordinance 82, 2023. Uh, ordinance 82 is an ordinance accepting the right of way for Darrow Road and Richner Road. Now, this was recommended by the Planning Commission meeting, uh, the Planning Commission at their last meeting, as a condition of the site approval plan for a Holt Orthodontics. A Planning Commission required a lot consolidation and right of way dedication at 9184 Darrow Road. 
The applicant is fulfilling these two requirements with this current submittal. Four parcels at this location will be consolidated into one parcel, and an additional right-of-way width will be dedicated as requested by the city engineer. Two of the existing parcels that are currently platted to the center line of State Route 91 will be modified to reflect the requested right-of-way width. Uh, the emergency this evening is to get this filed in a timely manner. Any questions or discussion on 82 2023? No. Right, hearing none, we move along to Ordinance 84 2023. Uh, this ordinance is to enter into an agreement with OR Colon Associates for appraisal and acquisition of the property pertaining to the Ravenna Shepherd Richmond Broadway intersection improvements. ODOT has approved selection of this firm. Uh, this is on an emergency this evening to get the process started in a timely manner. Are there any questions on Ordinance 84 2023? We do have the engineer here this evening. I do not. Hearing nothing additional, Ordinance 85 2023 is an ordinance to enter into an agreement with Bowman Appraisal Services for the review of the appraisal pertaining to the Ravenna Shepherd Richmond Broadway intersection improvements. ODOT has confirmed the selection of Bowman. This is on an emergency to get the process started in a timely manner. Are there any questions on 85 2023 for the engineer or anyone else? No. Okay. Ordinance 86 2023 is an ordinance to submit ballot language to the Board of Elections in regard to Ordinance 60 20. 60 23, which was to 2023, which is to amend sections 1148 and 1151 of child daycare centers in the C5 district. Uh, any questions on Ordinance 86 this evening? No. All right, that concludes legislation. That moves us on to miscellaneous. Uh, Council, does anyone have any miscellaneous items to discuss at the caucus meeting this evening? No. Mayor? No, sir. Uh, all right, with that, that concludes the caucus meeting at 727. Uh, we will adjourn, and we'll be back here at 730 for the main meeting. <laughs>